Hi, folks. In February, the Anti-Racism Task Force led two wonderful Sunday morning conversations at church. Two documents provided a springboard for discussion, and they offered them to the church again. This first is from the newest confession in the Presbyterian Church, United States of America's Book of Confessions. It's called the Belhar Confession and emerged out of the post-apartheid context in South Africa as the painful legacy of racism was named and as the church named how it had fallen short and how its mission and ministry would be guided going forward. It's a powerful document and we are sharing some of it with you today and commend the entire document for your study and worship. From the Belhar Confession, unity is therefore both a gift and an obligation for the Church of Jesus Christ, that through the working of God's Spirit, it is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality which must be earnestly pursued and sought, one which the people of God must continually be built up to attain. That this unity must become visible so that the world may believe that separation, enmity, and hatred between people and groups is sin which Christ has already conquered. And accordingly, that anything which threatens this unity may have no place in the church and must be resisted. That this unity of the people of God must be manifested and be active in a variety of ways, in that we love one another, that we experience, practice, and pursue community with one another, that we are obligated to give ourselves willingly and joyfully to be of benefit and blessing to one another, that we share one faith, have one calling, are of one soul and one mind, have one God and Father, and uh, are filled with one spirit, are baptized with one baptism, eat of one bread and drink of one cup, confess one name, are obedient to one Lord, work for one cause and share one hope, together come to know the height and the breadth and depth of the love of Christ. Together are built up to the stature of Christ, to the new humanity, together know and bear one another's burdens, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ, that we need one another and upbuild one another, admonishing and comforting one another, that we suffer with one another for the sake of righteousness, pray together, together serve God in this world, and together fight against all which may threaten or hinder this unity to prepare for the adoption of this confession for the Presbyterian Church USA, a vision statement about the denomination's anti-racism policy was created. This vision statement was helpful for us and we believe it speaks powerfully today about the work we are called to do as a church and especially after the, the aftermath of killing of George Floyd. The Bible insistently re reveals that God loves diversity and justice. It is embodied in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, who resists the power of the empire and values all persons, regardless of status, as children of God. Racism is the opposite of what God intends for humanity. It is the rejection of the other, which is entirely contrary to the word of God incarnate in Jesus Christ. It is a form of idolatry that elevates human-made hierarchies of value over divinely given free grace. Through colonization and slavery, the United States of America helped to create and embrace a system of valuing and devaluing people based on skin color and ethnic identity. The name for this system is white supremacy. The system deliberately subjugated groups of people for the purpose of material, political, and social advantage. Racism is the continuous, continuous, continuing legacy of white supremacy. Racism is a lie about our fellow human beings, where it says that some are less than others. It is also a lie about God, 
for it falsely claims that God favors parts of creation over the entirety of creation. Because of our biblical understanding of who God is and what God intends for humanity, the PCUSA must stand against, speak against, and work against racism. Anti-racist effort is not optional for Christians. It is an essential aspect of Christian discipleship, without which we fail to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Bigoted beliefs, hate crimes, prejudice, and intentional discrimination are all, are all actual sin. They stem from and contribute to the original sin of the systematic racism that permeates our culture and society. The actual sins of past generations such as slavery, the Indian M Removal Act, the Chinese Exclusion Act, and the colonization of Hawaii and Guam, the Immigration Act of 1924, and so on, become the original sin in which we live. White people in the United States of America continue collectively to reap the benefits of white supremacy, even when they individually believe in the equality of all people. Our theological heritage regarding sin makes it impossible for Presbyterians to acknowledge the complex realities of racism instead of moving to defend an illusion of individual innocence. Acknowledging, acknowledging our sinfulness ought not produce self-hatred or paralyzing guilt. Rather, the appropriate response is to confess our sin before God and one another, confident in the grace and love of God. The grace that enables us to confess also empowers us to repent, that is, to turn and walk the other way, towards the eschatological vision of God, new creation. By grace, we are forgiven and we respond to the grace with God, gratitude, humility, and new zeal for the gospel. We commit ourselves to do the work of countering racism in our witness to the gospel, in our affirmation that God loves difference. We will honor diversity as a good in which God delights. In our conviction that God desires justice, we will learn from others to broaden our understanding of equality. In our humility as sinful people, we will listen openly to diverse voices regarding how race and racism functions in our society. In our gratitude for God's grace, we will turn again and again towards the vision of whole community found in the word of God in our joyful response to God's love, we will love one another.